Hare Krishna Prabhuji, uh, Mataji has joined us. So we can hand over okay. to you. Hare Krishna Mataji, then what pronoun? Hare Krishna, thank you so much. I think I'm having some issue connecting to the laptop. One minute. Uh, can you can you continue reading the uh, translation? I'll I'll just be back. Okay. Sure, Mataji. Prabhuji, would you like me to read the translation? I'm back. Okay, Mataji. <clears throat> so we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 1, Chapter 13. Tritrashtra quits home and the text for today is text 42. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. As the cow bound through the nose by a long rope is conditioned, so also human beings are bound by different Vedic injunctions and are conditioned to obey the orders of the Supreme. Hare Krishna. Mataji, would you like us to read the purport? Okay, we can read the purport. Would anybody like to read the purport? Okay, um, are you going to continue, Mataji? Okay, I'll yeah, read. I, I can read, Mataji. I can read and then I can stop and then you continue. Sure, sure. Purport. Um, every living being, whether a man or an animal or a bird, thinks that he is free by himself, but actually no one is free from the severe laws of the Lord. The laws of the Lord are severe because they cannot be disobeyed in any circumstances. The man-made laws may be evaded by cunning outlaws, but in the codes of supreme lawmaker, there is not the slightest possibility of neglecting the laws. A slight change in the course of God made law can bring about a massive danger to be faced by the lawbreaker. Such laws of the Supreme are generally known as the codes of religion under different conditions, but the principle of the religion everywhere is one and the same. Namely, obey the order of the Supreme God, the codes of religion. That is the condition of material existence. All living beings in this material world have taken up the risk of conditioned life by their own selection and are thus entrapped by the laws of material nature. The only way to get out of the entanglement is to agree to obey the Supreme. But instead of becoming free from the clutches of Maya or illusion, foolish human beings become bound by up by different nomenclatures being des designated as Brahmans, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras, Hindus, Mohammedans, Indians, European, Americans, Chinese, and many others. And thus they carry out the orders of the Supreme Lord under the influence of respective scriptures or legislative injunctions. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, kindly continue. The statutory law. Yeah, the statu statutory laws of the state are imperfect limitation, imitation replicas of religious codes. The secular state or the god godless state allows the citizens to break the laws of God, but restricts them from disobeying the laws of the state. The result is that the people in general suffer more by breaking the laws of God than by obeying the per imperfect laws made by the man. Every man is imperfect by constitution under conditions of material existence. And there is not the least possibility that even the most materially advanced man can enact perfect legislation. On the other hand, there is no such imperfection in the laws of God. If leaders are educated in the laws of God, there is no necessity of makeshift legislative council of aimless men. There is necessity of change in the makeshift laws of man. But there is no change in the God-made laws because they are made perfect by all perfect personality Godhead. The codes of religions, scriptural injunctions are, ma are made by liberated representatives of God in consideration of different conditions of living and by carrying out the orders of the Lord. The conditioned living beings gradually become free from the clutches of material existence. The factual position of the living being is, however, that he is the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord. 
in his liberated state he renders service to the lord in transcendental love and thus enjoys a life of full freedom even sometimes on an equal level with the lord or sometimes more than the lord but in the conditioned material world every living being wants to be the lord of other living beings and thus by the illusion of maya this mentality of lording it over becomes a cause of further extension of condition conditional life so in the material world the living being is still more conditioned until he surrenders unto the lord by reviving his original state of eternal servitorship this is the last instruction of bhagavad gita of the bhagavad gita and all other recognized scriptures of the world hari krishna thank you mata ji hari krishna thank you hari govind prabhu for reading the purport hari krishna mata ji dhanwa pranam yes. please accept our humble obeisances on behalf of everybody who have joined the group and are about to join mata ji today is a very special day for us here in kenya today was the opening of our center in nakuru so like eldoret there is a small town called nakuru so um, uh, arya govind prabhu and mansi ganga mata ji are wow. heading that center and we were all there nakuru is around 4 hours away from here so we drove there and we have just come back but um, please wow. bless us that uh, we are able to uh, fulfill uh, shila prabhupad's dream and uh, make more devotees and um, make everybody krishna consciousness in uh, conscious in nakuru please bless us Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Krishna. Great job, uh, uh, everyone. I think Ari Govind Prabhu is very capable and uh, Mansi Ganga Mataji also, right? So very nice, very nice effort and uh, very happy uh, that you have uh, a temple. Wow, so much. Uh, a, center, a center, a center. A center that yes. you want. Eldoret also yeah, a yeah. center. But like Srila Prabhupada's dream was that every town should have Uh, center. So now Eldoret Town has a center. So now Nakuru. Uh, after three years, we have a new center. So wonderful, wonderful! Congratulations, definitely, Mataji. I will pray, pray that a uh, lot of devotees come into Krishna consciousness and also start hearing Krishna Katha. So this is very blissful. Uh, thank you, Prabhu Ji, for leading this effort, and thank you, Mataji, also. And uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful news that uh, uh, I'm able to hear at this day. So let's get started with our prayers. Om Agniyana Timiranda Siyanana Anshana Shalakaya Chakshur Umiditam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Karaswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashayata Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीनवता स्वागता कृष्ण पुण्य श्रवण कीर्तन हृदय अभद्राणी विदु मंत्री सुहृत सतम नष्ट प्रायु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भक्ति नष्ट की so specifically uh, the theme here that we are going to study is uh, what is the verse number mati ji today 42 mati ji 42 42 okay so uh, if you look at uh, 29 to 37 it is talking about dhritarashtra gandhari and vidura leaving and yudhishthira is lamenting uh, gandhari followed dhritarashtra and yudhishthira discovered their departure yudhishthira laughed and inquired from sanjaya sanjaya feels uh, oh my god they have gone and he feels so cheated and then mm, narada muni shatters yudhishthira's lamentation and illusion that is arrival of narada muni and king yudhishthira's inquiries narada muni is philosophically dispelling the illusion uh, that uh, yudhishthira maharaj is going through so this is kind of the theme that we are going to see in today's verse as you can understand a cow is bound by a rope through its noose similarly human beings are bound by the vedic vedic injunctions which are supreme lord's order 
again what happens when the the when um, a dog is let loose of his uh, nose or whatever then the dog obviously get into a road accident or something right i mean if it doesn't follow its particular uh, uh, um, whatever it is uh, tied to if if it goes out then it just goes outside and meet with an accident or something like that similarly we are also bound by god's injunctions whatever vedic literature say whatever shastra say we are supposed to imbibe it and what happens when a living entity uh, goes aside goes astray of vedic injunctions this is the thing right when the living entity goes astray of vedic injunctions or god given shastras what happens to that living entity he gets bound over and over again depending upon his mentality he is bound in the samsara the cycle of samsara birth death old age and disease all the time this is what happens to a living entity now if we known thing of course we all know and we've heard this several times that okay if you're not going to bind and abide by the instructions of what is said in the scriptures then you're going to be bound this is very well known what is new mata ji we need to know something new right this is what uh, this is what satisfies our heart i i want to learn something so that i can implement it in my krishna conscious life so we will try to learn several things today i'll uh, try to briefly um, touch upon the story from a from the beginning to kind of understand the mood uh, mood set here so we will go through it verse by verse all right so then uh, we will be able to understand what exactly is being uh, talked about here so just to get that mindset we will try to go from uh, the several verses that we have already seen uh, before so just give me a minute i'll just open the purport <clears throat> if you look at the uh, verse uh, 29 uh, the verse 29 is talking about a different uh, concept altogether verse 29 it is said according to shrila vishnu chakravarti takura's commentary it says the king born of ajamida's dynasty with the eyes of knowledge enlightened by cutting the ropes of affection because of determination he left the house um according to vishnu chakravarti takura a very very important point is being stressed here dear devotees so this is very important because this is what is setting the platform to help us understand what dhritarashtra is doing so kindly pay attention to this important detail okay so maybe uh, for the next 15 20 minutes we will be discussing 15 to 25 minutes we'll be discussing this concept uh, on bhakti but anyways let's pay attention to this very important concept we have already covered so we are going to dive in a little bit of our acharya saying okay so he was given teachings of the commentary says i'm just reading the commentary here according to the commentary dhritarashtra was given the teachings of bhakti mishra gyana for liberation he was born in the ajamita dynasty because of his mental determination he could be the path shown by his brother was the path of bondage and liberation now uh, we have to understand there is an important terminology that is being used here vidura taught dhritarashtra what bhakti mishra gyan and that is why he got liberation and um, again uh, we need to understand this different uh, types of bhakti so that we understand what is bhakti mishra gyan so let's try to understand that okay uh, what are the different types of bhakti so that we know where we also stand isn't it when we understand the different terminologies of bhakti then we will be in a better position to understand what type of bhakti we are practicing okay so uh, this is very important again uh, there is something called pradhani bhuta bhakti and guni bhuta bhakti okay so what is pradhani bhuta bhakti pradhani bhuta bhakti means bhakti is pradhan bhakti is primary in pradhani bhuta bhakti bhakti is pradhan okay that much you should understand what is pradhan bhakti is pradhan then this person who is doing pradhani bhuta bhakti may also perform karma or gnana okay so when he has perfected the process of karma he gets into gnana okay only when you are detached at least 90% detached then you can enter into gnana you can't enter into the path of gnana 
by having material desires okay this is another point that you need to note how when can you enter jnana jnana can be you can enter into the process of jnana only when your material de de desires are when you become detached when you, only when you uh, when you are kind of cleansed of your material desires uh, then only you will be able to enter into the jnana path okay so karma or jnana this person can go do but bhakti is pradhan bhakti is primary on top of it he is doing karma or gyan so what does it mean it means he is not fully doing bhakti you understand that point this is pradhani bhuta bhakti do you all get it yes yes mataji okay. maybe understand this another can you repeat oh, it it was yeah yeah i'll repeat uh, is my voice breaking or uh, no concentration lacking oh okay okay as long as my internet is working i'm fine uh, otherwise i'll switch to my uh, switch to my mobile device so pradhani bhuta bhakti means bhakti is pradhan bhakti is done more than karma or jnana but karma or jnana is also done okay along with bhakti bhakti is pradhan bhakti is top uh, bhakti is more say for example it could be 80% bhakti then 20% karma gyan i'm just giving a statistic here it's not like 80% but whatever it is bhakti is more more than 50% if you were to understand it that way so this is pradhani bhuta bhakti okay so i talked about karma and jnana when can one enter into jnana when can one enter into jnana he can enter when his uh, when he sufficiently detached when his material desires are almost gone then that is the time he becomes eligible for gyan i can't say oh i'm i'm just i am going to enter into the path of gyan no that is why they recommend you to karma karma first do karma just become detached then uh, after you have become sufficiently cleansed of all your material desires then you can enter into gyan okay so this is one thing no this pradhani bhuta bhakta can be he can be what he can be karma mishra bhakta or gyan mishra bhakta and that is of two types please note that point karma mishra bhakta or jnana mishra bhakta this is for pradhani bhuta bhakti i know it's getting technical i'm sorry um, so let's try to understand it because this will help you in a very very long run also you know in your devotional life this is going to be like a deal breaker i would say so let's try to understand these concepts even though it is going to take a little bit of effort from our end because whenever we have heard something new uh yeah, whenever we are hearing something new it might take a little bit of time to grasp but uh i feel this is going to help you a lot with your devotional life as such so karma mishra gyana and um sorry karma mishra bhakti or jnana mishra bhakti so karma mishra bhakti what is pradhan bhakti is pradhan karma is secondary in jnana mishra bhakti bhakti is pradhan jnana is secondary okay this is one classification we have the next kind of bhakti like pradhani bhuta bhakti we have something called guni bhuta bhakti guni bhuta bhakti g u n i guni so now with regards to guni bhuta bhakti what is going on in guni bhuta bhakti bhakti is not predominant gyana or karma is predominant okay what is predominant gyana or karma so when such a kind of bhakti is practiced it is not even bhakti whatever is predominant it is called that okay so guni bhuta bhakti do we call it bhakti no no we don't call it bhakti because the bhakti is not pradhan whatever is pradhan we call that if he is so for guni bhuta bhakti what is the classification now how do we classify guni bhuta bhakti like how we classified pradhani bhuta bhakti into karma mishra bhakti and jnana mishra bhakti how are we classifying guni bhuta bhakti question may be asked isn't it so the answer is uh, bhakti mishra gyan or bhakti mishra karma okay this is how we classify guni bhuta bhakti bhakti mishra gyan or bhakti mishra karma so in bhakti mishra karma what is predominant karma is predominant yes karma is predominant and in bhakti mishra gyana what is predominant gyana is predominant so this is what is the understanding of 
ಗುಣೀಭೂತ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಧಾನ್ಯಭೂತ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸೊ ಹೋಪ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ನಾವು ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದ ಪರ್ಪಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ವಿಶ್ವನಾಥ್ ಚಕ್ರವರ್ತಿ ಠಾಕೂರ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸೇ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ದ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಿಶ್ರ ಜ್ಞಾನ್ what does that mean which is predominant there karma is predominant bhakti mishra gyana gyana bhakti gyana is predominant yeah gyana is predominant yes correct correct gyana is predominant so because bhakti bhakti mishra gyan so this is what is a guni buddha guni buddha bhakti okay so the predominant is what it is the predominant so when when it's guni buddha bhakti we say it is gyana is predominant so we call it it's gyan it's path of gyan more than path of bhakti because bhakti is not pradhan and what was the mot the motive was liberation okay so this is the point so because of this mental determination because of this he could leave that is what is the point anyways we will understand this further so what happens uh, when somebody uh, uh, comes into krishna consciousness a preliminary reason why he gets into krishna consciousness is because of his association with the sadhu because of it you get something called komala shraddha and then we uh, come to the process okay we continue to associate with sadhus the komala shraddha builds up builds up builds up it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and um, uh, this is all illustrated in uh, madhurya kadampani how how um, how how you enter into this process of bhakti what is the cause all that is discussed now an important point that we need to understand is devotion only creates devotion okay so sadhu sangha is very very important so when you look at uh, devotion of different devotees from the womb if you look at until the old age so many devotees have got devotion so for, for example prahlad maharaj he got devotion in the womb dhruva maharaj at the age of 5 he met narada muni bilva mangala takur in middle age he got uh, devotion to so like that ramachandra i mean like that uh, we have so many people tulsidas he was attracted to ram and uh, and then in middle age he got devotion so if you look at so many people sarvabhauma bhattacharya he was a mayavadi but then old age he got association of chaitanya mahaprabhu yamuna acharya he was a materialistic king he became a devotee arupa goswami sanatan goswami of course they are manjaris they were working just as if under the muslims for the sake of uh, pastime and then vidyapat dvijapatnis at the young age they got devotion prachina barhi 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 when the fourth to see him how he got associated with narthamuni and then uh, mm, uh katwang maharaj how uh, just one moment you know he was able to remember krishna in the final stage he got that devotion so we should always remember that sadhu sangha is plays a very important role in devotional service even the satsang that you are doing now this is also sadhu sangha right it is virtual of course but then and it is sadhu sangha who are interacting with uh, with all the vaishnavas on the call and then we are able to come together and understand shrimad bhagavatam so this sadhu is very important because our consciousness is like a liquid it seems means liquids nature what does it do liquids nature is to this is this is again given by his grace uh, sorry his solana uh, radha govind maharaj he says our consciousness is like a liquid which means liquids nature is to go down so always what happens we tend to go down if you are not in the association of devotees it it your consciousness always tries to go down by nature it has a tendency to go down that is why and hence to lift up our consciousness we have to always be in sadhu sangha so temple association devotee association a virtual associations in the form of sadhu sangha all these raise our consciousness and not down when dhritarashtra did that gandhari the power of chaste lady right she is not even seen their own children can you imagine that your children are born and you are not able to you have eyes you can see but she doesn't want to see can somebody be like that it's impossible isn't it impossible to kind of imagine the scenario where you are able to uh, where uh, you, you know you you have your children but you don't want to see them because of that uh, chastity that she wants to maintain now uh, so if you go further on described uh, in shila vishnu chakravarti thakur's commentary uh, why did she follow her husband right why did she follow her husband of course we all know right himalayas if you go to himalayas it's not a comfortable place to stay it's too much cold 
it's not an austere place to stay in the mountains. Um, so now the question is posed by Racharyas. How did Sukumari, so delicate Gandhari, how did she follow her husband to such an austere place? How did she follow? This was the uh, question that has been posed in verse number 30. So the verse number 30 says, um, according to the commentary, it says, just like the sannyasi, they go to the Himalayas without any kind of panic or difficulty or anxiety, right? In the mind, they want to go to Himalayas for perfection of their life. I want to perfect my life and hence I'm going to Himalayas. This is what they have in terms of uh, their will. The yogis, they have given up, I mean, this again, this is one point, like how the sannyasi, they go to Himalayas to kind of, uh, without bothering about any kind of panic or difficulty, uh, they want to go to Himalayas for perfection. And uh, similarly, you also see the yogis, they have given up enmity towards every living entity in this world. They are free from the vices. Uh, and uh, they want to go to a place like uh, Badrinath, not bothering about the effect of cold. They don't, they don't mind. Pinching troubles, not at all a problem. They are seeking higher perfection in their mission. This is what they are seeking. They are seeking for higher perfection. And that is why they want to go where they want to go. And then look at a young soldier. The young soldier, he never is afraid to go to the battle. He never becomes afraid to go enter into the battle. The spirit of fighting is there in him. Uh, he is front of an enemy. And that front, being in front of the enemy, it gives him pleasure. Right? He never shows his back to his enemy. They don't care for their life. The spirit of fighting is there for that particular soldier. So now, um, like that, uh, you know, we are going to compare. Gandhari, she was totally devoted. Therefore, she followed her husband. Right? She, she is just totally devoted to her husband. Not at all. Um, she, she doesn't, uh, she, she's, she's so, so totally devoted to her husband that she doesn't care. She just followed her husband. There's, uh, again, when you look at these people, they all left in the palace. They all left at the palace at the night. And uh, you may ask this question. Oh my God, Mataji, what are you talking about? They left the palace. There was no security guards or what? Didn't they stop them? How can the security guards just uh, allow them to go outside just like that? How come? Because of the presence of Vidura. He was there, right? He was there and that is why they did not stop, it seems. Vidura is the Prime Minister of Hastinapur. Who will ask the Prime Minister? There's Nobody will ask questions, isn't it? That is why he was left. And now if you look at uh, Kantari, she just followed her husband irrespective of you know how troublesome it could be for a person. That is why we gave different examples to help us understand the mindset of Kantari. Okay? So now if you look at the scenario in the in real life scenario, Vidra, because Dhritarashtra doesn't have the hands of Dhritarashtra and Dhritarashtra will be holding hands of Gantari. Like that, that's a picture you have to imagine to kind of understand the scenario, right? Maharaj, uh, the, so Vidra might be, wish, he, we have to visually understand that he'll be holding uh, Dhritarashtra and Dhritarashtra will then be pulled by Gantari. So that's how they'll be do, going. And now, um, so, um, there's this verse in Bhagavad Gita, right? Matras Pashastu Kaunteya, right? We get happiness or distress through what? Senses. So, whatever expression or emotion, it's all because the mind is attached to the senses. The mind and the senses, if they are disconnected from a sense object, then they may not be affected. Say, for example, a person, he's given some anesthesia. So, even if the sense object is there, the senses are not going to respond and the mind is not going to get elated, be happy or be distressful because they are all disconnected. Like that, now we are, our mind is tightly connected to face the dualities. It's connected, um, we are tightly connected to the mind. Mind, oh, mind makes, this makes me happy, this makes me sad. Oh, when I come in contact with, uh, say for example, uh, uh, this person, I become very happy. But this person, uh, he always troubles me. So I'm not happy when I come in contact with this person. So what happens? There's always, uh, I like, I don't like. We are always put into dualities, right? Every time we come in contact with a sense object, then senses uh, act in a particular way upon, depending upon which the mind says, I am happy or I am not happy. It is the seat of emotions. And this is what is going on. So, but when it comes to these 
priests or yogis or soldiers or even Gandhari for that matter, they did not identify themselves with the mind or senses. So they are, even though the temperature is probably negative, they don't, uh, they say, yeah, for my perfection, this temperature is needed. I, um, uh, uh, I'm different from this. I'm, I'm, I'm a soul. That is their conception, right? That is what they are all, uh, that is what they realize. So when you are the soul, you are oblivious to these external things you, because you are internally absorbed. This is the point. So that's verse number 30. That's the commentary again. So your uh, Acharyas are trying to help understand what is the perspective? What is happening here? So by understanding these commentaries, then we are, by understanding Srila Prabhupada's purport, purport scrutinizingly, and then hand in hand, when we are able to uh, relish the Acharya pur purports, because again, it's, it's Prabhupada is trying to convey the same point to us, right? So this is very important to always uh, be situated and try to understand, get get more, more into Srimad Bhagavatam, right? But we have to definitely be first very, very, very scrutinizingly Many times Srila Prabhupada's purport, then come to our Acharya's purport so that we can understand the mood better. But anyways, these points, uh, I, I just felt this was just important from a Shastra point of view to understand, okay, what is this bhakti? What are different kinds of bhakti? Now, one may say, oh yeah, since I'm doing karma mishra bhakti, uh, I might do bhakti more than karma, but then uh, I'm not situated in uttama bhakti yet. What is uttama bhakti? Uttama bhakti is anya abhilashita shunyam jnana karma adhi anavritam anukulyena krishna anu shilanam bhakti rutama. I'm not there yet. So when we understand it, because that means this anya abhilashita shunyam, all these points have to be satisfied for uttama bhakti, isn't it? So we are endeavoring, as a sadhaka, we are endeavoring towards uttama bhakti. Now, uh, what is the other, uh, what is the next uh, 31, right? 31, um, Yudhishthira. After performing the Sandhya rites, offering oblations in the fire and offering the respects to the Brahmana um, by giving sesame, cow, land and gold, he entered into the house to offer respects to his elders. But he did not see Vidura, Dhritarashtra or Gandhari. Again, the point that we need to understand here is Yudhishthira, he see how, how he is not even considering these elders as elders. He is considering them as their parents, as his parents, and then going to go and offer respects. This mood, dear devotees, that, uh, that, that's why I wanted to bring this point. This mood is very important. How he doesn't differentiate. This person is good. This person is bad. Oh, yeah, he's any he's friend. No, that means dualities. The mind is bound by what? Dualities. When we are differentiating, this right, this that, this that. When we are looking from the Shastric point of view, we are all part and parcels of Krishna, isn't it? When we have this twist, 180 degree twist has to happen again. As I all these interests meant for me. Please, uh, whenever I stress a concept or something, I feel so bad. Why am I torturing you all? <laughs> it's just for me, okay? I, I have to torture myself. So, again, you're, you're coming in between as scapegoats, I believe. But uh, it's very important, dear devotees, to help us understand that uh, the vision of how Shastras can help us, right? To look at uh, everybody uh, with equal eyes. Not with equal eyes in the sense, of course, as devotees, we do have the gradations, Suttama, Matyama, and Kanishta. Accordingly, we give respect to each of them. But at the same time, uh, we need to understand uh, that everybody is part and parcel of Krishna to start off. And that is how we build respect. Because respect is the preliminary thing that we need to, irrespective of any living entity, we give respect to them. As you advance in the process of devotional service, what happens is you become sensitive to even small creatures going on the ground. You see, oh, see, these Uttama Bhakta are so careful. Oh my God, whether an ant is, that is what is seen in Jadabharat. If you look at him, he was so conscious. Why? He was doing this way and that way he was trying to move his body so that some ant or anything across is not hurt. As you advance, this happens. You don't want to uh, consciously or unconsciously hurt anyone. This is the point. They, they want to be so careful that every living entity is a part of Krishna. This has to go into our minds. 
this this point then we give respect to every living entity and depending upon the gradation we give even more respect to uttama and madhyama than a kanishta that comes but anyways so this this, this is what here we see yudhishthira maharaj he is offering respects to his parents kind of he wants to go with that mood to offer respects as soon as he finished his duties as a brahmana i mean uh, duties as uh, sorry um, sandhya rites as soon as he finished that and then he worshiped the brahmanas then he went and he went to his mm, you he went to see if dhritarashtra and kandari were there so that he could offer respects to them now uh, if you look at yudhishthira maharaj he is ajata shatru means who can have more for enemies than yudhishthira maharaj how who can have but he says there's no but it says here that he has no enemies at all <laughs> he doesn't even have a single enemy it seems how can you understand he is ajata shatru so <laughs> yudhishthira maharaj such a kind of person and to and to pay respects to the elders he entered the house then he went to offer respects to his uh, elderly members he found that they were not there that is that is verse number 31 and then 32 what is 32 so uh, that the 32 is also so uh, afflicted in mind he asked sanjaya who is there o oh, son of uh, ga avalgan where is my blind aged uncle his wife grief slain children and uh, you know where are they so yudhishthira maharaj considered dhritarashtra and gandhari as pita and mata although obviously they are not his father and mother he called them father and mother and uh, so this is uh, this is what is yudhishthira maharaj did i mean he so we will try to understand his mood even further when we go down has he thrown himself in ganga along with his wife out of sorrow with all the children dead while contemplating my foolish offense now uh, uh, so how see this this is the mood of yushra maharaj he did not blame anyone right he just is trying to see fault oh is it because of me that uh, they are doing something is it because i committed some offense he didn't say anything else right he's just trying to find out fault in within himself and trying to blame himself to see if he had committed something uh, if he was foolish on his part to have committed an offense so because of which they are out now um, so the the verses then go further like this so when our father pandu departed these two protected all or uh, these two protected all of us children who are their relatives from danger from this place where they have where they have gone so like that he started to contemplate so this is what is the contemplation that is happening okay so just wanted to sign kind of uh, set the mood here before we go into today's purport now i will try to go into today's purport and try to understand uh, make you all um, uh, go through that purport little bit more uh, sorry i'm just uh, trying to get to the purport so this is what nathamuni's advice or an animal or a bird thinks he is free by himself but actually no one is free from the severe laws of the lord um, uh, again why are we having these regulative principles why can't we just follow krishna consciousness without these regulative principles what is the need what is the need for us to follow these regulative principles anybody else we will make sense oh we will make sense otherwise okay hare krishna four pillars of the dharma yes four pillars okay yeah. the health and also poster. austerities Okay, to help us to get closer and closer to Krishna. Okay, very nice. Our Acharya sir said so. We have to follow. Okay, very good. Uh, to, that is very nice. To purify yeah. ourselves also, Hare Krishna. Correct. 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 So the thing is, we are following Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, right? Vaidhi Sadhana means there has to be rules and regulations. 
and uh, raganuga means uh, this these people uh, they are following the impression they they have gotten um, they 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 have gotten to a point of asakti or stage of asakti or ruchi where they are able to know okay they are uh, beyond okay the struggles that we are going through in our everyday devotional life right because of that now they uh, they are uh, they also if you look at raganuka raga raganuka bhaktas they are also supposed to follow the rules that is given by the guru but when it comes to this by the sadhana rules it may automatically be performed by them in some cases or depending upon the scenario it may apply to them or not apply to them okay but with regards to by the sadhaka we are supposed to follow and uh, these are basic these are basic means see what does prabhupad want from us he wants us to at least get to the level of sattva right when we start to uh, say for example gamble that is mode of passion again if you look at these regulative principles these are driving you towards passion and it's right basically that's the point and we don't already we are in passion and ignorance on top of it if we are trying to break the regulative principles then there is no way there is no chance some discipline has to be there right i mean to for us to come to sattva okay he's trying his best chant minimum 60 rounds do this do that when he is trying to tell us we will slowly slowly get elevated and come to sattva and from sattva we cannot stop there we have to still transcend the modes because modes are hindrances it is all possible it is all scientific this is uh, i mean uh, we may doubt oh i can come to try to come to sattva but how can i transcend the modes do but so we need to uh, have just belief and trust in our acharyas and follow whatever they are saying in fact if we have this mood mindset i am not even going to question prabhupad is saying i am going to follow my guru maharaj is saying i am going to follow if we have this blind faith that's the best actually because it's so difficult to convince oh yeah this is why we are doing what i mean of course we need to be convinced because uh, otherwise our mind don't leave us but this person who has faith he will come oh yeah my guru maharaj has said this i am going to follow if we are able to have trust and faith in our guru maharaj in our in our acharya sri prabhupad that is where we need to come because after going through the shastras we are getting so many doubts so many questions that that as i told you before uh, the doubts uh, you know shastras has to clear the doubt but in fact we are getting more doubts by reading shastras right this this was the point that we discussed last time also so it's very important dear devotees to get get building this trust and faith that's why i always go into terminologies i always try to help you okay this is what it is this is what it is uh otherwise see one may ask this question through pradhani bhuta bhakti can one attain prema This is a valid question. You know what is pradhani bhuta bhakti? Can one attain prema through pradhani bhuta bhakti, or can one attain um, uh, can one attain prad uh, prema through guni bhuta bhakti? Is it possible? No, Mata ji. No. Yeah, this prema is possible only through uttama bhakti. Uttama bhakti is anya bilashita shuni. So this prema bhakti is the biggest, the highest. and we are aspiring for the highest so it's kind of uh, close to impossible uh, to get that shyam sundara krishna mm, i mean in the sense these uh, these people have different destinations i'll talk about the destinations maybe in some other class uh, but to get this uh, Ma- madhurya bhav is very very difficult okay so let's uh, maybe understand what their destinations are in some also an interesting concept okay uh, but anyways Uh, so before uh, before that we'll try to see what else is seen in the puppet um so according to baladev vidya bhushan i wanted to say this one point uh, what is freeing yourself means freeing yourself means see i i'm i'm given this opportunity i'm given i'm staying here in a house i can do whatever i want i don't have anybody to question me oh my parents are not going to question me my husband is not oh because i have free will right i can do whatever i want i can um, i just can abstain from cooking today because i can do whatever i want this is free will one may consider but according to baldev vishabhushan free will means 
whatever activities that free you from samsara, that is free will. So free will is not what we think is free will. Right? Free will means, oh, my mind whimsically says don't cook, don't do anything, just, just relax, just go to sleep. Maybe the mind says that you don't you don't need to exert yourself. Tomorrow you have work, long hours. So just take it easy today. Don't do anything. This is free will we may think. Because I'm not bound by any rules, regulations. I, I, I'm just acting according whimsically to, according to my own mind. And our mind is filled with impurities. Don't listen to your mind. Okay, point number one. Second thing is Bhalde Vidya Bhushan. He says in Gita commentary that free will means freeing yourself. Whatever activities that frees you from samsara, that is free will. So we understood a very important definition of free will. What we are thinking is free will is not free will. Right? So this was a very big learning for me. Free will means if an activity is going to free you from samsara, because you're being tied to the noose, you're being tied to the ropes of material nature. So you have to get freed, isn't it? That is real freedom. This freedom, the so-called freedom that you say, that is not freedom. This is according to Paladevi Tiyapushan from his Gita commentary. So now the laws of Lord are very severe. Because they cannot be disobeyed in any circumstance. Why they are severe? Because when you do, there is always an equal and opposite reaction that happens. When you do something, and if you are going to break the law, a reaction will come. On top of it, what is happening? An impression is getting stored. Isn't it a consequence? Because the impressions are stored. And because the impressions are stored in a particular fashion, if you are going to go on repeat that activity, impressions, impressions, impressions are formed. And animal uh, and eating their fly so many lifetimes and it's all stored in the form of impressions, right? There is a chance and probability in this lifetime also you're going to commit the same act. So that is why when we perform an action, we have to be very careful that not only are we going to have a consequence, but also an impression gets formed. Because more the number of impressions that you are making here, then the chances of you repeating that action is going to be greater. It's like a computer programming, right? If you're all computer uh, geeks, then, you know, you can understand this karmic, pro this programming that is stored in the mind because of the actions that you have been performing uh, for various lifetimes, it gets stored here. And irrespective of, you may feel it's not right, but because you have repeated that activity so many times, you just and just consciously you just, you you're not able to avoid it. You just perform that activity. You you're used to killing the animal and eating, so you performed it for so many lifetimes. This lifetime also you have, you have repeated it. Then obviously now you're learning shastras, but you're having strong resistance to control that urge to not kill an animal and eat. Understanding. This is what is happening. That programming is supposed spontaneous in most cases. You're not, say, say for example, somebody hit you hard. You're just going to slap him back right on his face. This, this has become like a very, uh, the computer programming worked and you're just hitting the person. You're not even able to think because you, what your mind said, oh yeah, you have repeated this activity so many times. Somebody hits you, you have to hit him back. This is what. But our Shastras say, no, we have to be forgiving. We have to be tolerant. Right? So there is always that tug of war that is happening, dear devotees. We need to be very conscious what goes in here. Okay? Anyways, I think we, we can stop here. The point that is talked about in Srila Prabhupada's purport is very important. Meaning, whatever activities we do, we should not identify ourselves with the body or mind. This is the point that he's uh, brought about. And we have to always try to be Shastrically, uh, shastrically uh, we have to think about every each and every scenario and then act according to that uh, task. So that will save us and not identify with our body or mind because that's going to take us to the path of hell. Okay, Because mind is so impure. So we never, have, never should listen to our mind. So anyways, dear devotees, thank you so much uh, for patiently listening to me. Jai Shri La Prabhupada, Vansha Kalpa Taru Vyashya, Kripasandu Bhyevacha, Patita Naam Pavaneyo, Vaishnavibhyo, Namo Namo. Hare Krishna.
All right, Krishna Mataji, thank you so much for this wonderful class and clarifying so many concepts about Pradhana Bhutta Bhakti and Guna Bhutta Bhakti and then even telling us about Uttama Bhakti. And um, what I really understood um, very well is this free will. What I thought free will is not the real free will. So thank you for clarifying that point freeing yourself from the sansara. And um, we have with us uh, Vijayanti Mataji, so, who have joined for the first time. So thank you, Mataji, for joining yeah, us. I want to introduce Mataji to everyone. So Vaijanti Mataji is... Uh, Vaijanti Mataji is... Uh, she's a practicing doctor. Uh, she's an internal medicine, medicine practicing doctor from uh, Kaiser, permanently from California. Uh, so Mataji is so interested uh, in Shastras, always, uh, you know, wants to hear any any class, any satsang. She always is so eager like Lakshmi Mataji. Uh, she wants to hop into different uh, sessions. And uh, I feel so fortunate to be connected with her. And um, I, I definitely feel so close to her. And I wanted to invite her for this satsang as well. Uh, so thank you, Mataji, for joining today's call. I really appreciate it. Radhika Ma, I love you. I'm old in age, but dumb in Shastric knowledge. I'm working on learning to be like you or no. learning from you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. You're very happy. I wish you the very uh, best. Uh, she's like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Mataji. It really means a lot to me. Hare Krishna, Ma. Thank you. Thank you very Hare much, Krishna. Mataji, for joining Hare in. Krishna. Hare Krishna. This class goes on every day at the same time. Hare. So we don't have a holiday. So if you I have will. the time, okay. and, uh, every day it's at this time, I know it will be morning for you if you're joining from uh, the US. But whenever you have time, yes. kindly join in. We have different speakers every day and uh, um, it is a class for beginners like I us. So uh, I hope you will enjoy it. Yes, and, perfect. And let us all unmute and chant. So I'm a pretty beginner, but this is I'm still above my grade. I will still love to join whenever I can. Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you. Krishna. May we welcome you with three Hari Bols. Kindly everybody unmute and let's uh, um, uh, invite Mataji to the group. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so going back, are we, um, this is our free will now. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Hare Krishna Mataji. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Lakshmi. Wonderful. Mataji, thank you so much for all the technical terms. And whatever we are doing, we can even uh, locate it where we are. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have a question, Mataji. Maybe I am not able to attend all days. I am just uh, hopping in whenever I can. Maybe that's why the doubt. So other participants who are on the call, please apologize my question if it's already been asked and answered. So Vidura, then uh, he is uh, suggesting uh, Dhridrashtra that you are in all these kind and are you not ashamed of being here and all those so he is telling a path for the eternal uh, liberation, right? So in that path, he is they they are doing Ashtanga Yoga, and but Vidra knows every, everything about Krishna and Bhakti, but we he didn't tell that why Mataji or am I understood differently? Very Please correct. Very good, you understood it the right way, Mataji, because uh, because of the offense, Mataji, because of the offense committed by the Drashra. That is why he couldn't take the path of bhakti. Mm -hmm. The offensive mentality. So many devotees he has offended, Mataji. Not one or two, right? That is the reason. Uh, because the fortunate, most for, more fortunate and most fortunate, right? Most fortunate are those who get into bhakti, path of bhakti. But because of his offensive mentality, he couldn't enter into the pure path of pure devotion. That is the point. Very, very good question. Very valid question. This is Pepa. Very good. Thank you, Mataji. Thanks for clarifying. This was disturbing yes. me for a lot. And uh, thank good you so much question. for that. Very good question. This also gives a warning that we do any Vaishnava Bharat. We should be so much careful in our doings. 
absolutely because um, you know look at pandavas they carry krishna in their heart they carry krishna you know even when arjuna was sleeping when krishna was asked to, to he told uh, somebody to go and check on him what is going on when he sleeping Marat. chanting krishna's name the sirs are standing is chanting krishna 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 all the time how can somebody offend such a kind of devotee right true it's impossible to get krishna prem by offending devotees impossible but it is krishna feel so bad they are carrying me in my they they are carrying me in my heart they are literally taking me every day not even for a moment they are disconnected from me and when somebody is going to hurt krishna feels bad bhakti marani is not willing to give to that person offense is serious matter ji offense is what is prohibiting us we have to be very careful of our offensive mentalities when we use our mind to think about a devotee yeah this guy is good that guy is bad that is this then that's a problem <laughs> just drop your mind right there don't go into uh, uh, just undermining or uh, judging someone we are not here to judge we are here to judge ourselves how much faults we have that is that is what we need to judge we are not supposed to judge others this this judging mentality is what leads to offense so we need to be careful <laughs> True, Mataji. Thank you so much. And this also shows how much uh, devotees are merciful because I have done so much offense or may, so much sins, but still they were kind enough to give this uh, bhakti. So should be grateful for them as well yes. and to our acharyas. Thank you, Mataji. Yes. And your yes. wonderful point, even free will, as uh, Kirti the Mataji was telling, that is also a great point, along with all other uh, uh, different types and classifications. Uh, thing and any action usually will bring a reaction we know that but impression is also is the one so it's almost like a quote you gave us today thank you so much mataji you captured the essence got it what? you thank captured the whole essence of the class <laughs> thank you so much for Great. bringing so much value to our class mataji hare krishna definitely mataji whatever as i told i am talking i'm speaking also so uh, today a, a lot of uh, vaishnavas are going to come to our house i was cooking i actually did not have any time to prepare for this class it was a uh, impromptu class i would say it was completely this uh, this week has been so crazy for me i'm lagging behind in my service and uh, somehow i i i was going to cancel this class last minute and say mataji i am not able to do or i can't do justice to this class but uh, it's my spiritual master i have to give credit to I think um, whatever i spoke it's due to his mercy every day every every day whenever i speak it's due to his mercy only but today some special mercy thank you mataji just wanted to share that <laughs> Thank you very much, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, I want to make a comment, Mataji. I am really sorry. I know we are running out of time, but actually, even when after preparation, if somebody comes to the class, maybe through the shastra and everything, but without preparation, without all, with the last minute thing, if they come, they will tell their realization. What is went so deep in them will come out. That, so we are very fortunate that we attended today's class thank you <laughs> yeah that's why i went into the commentary and uh, yeah anyways uh, <laughs> uh, thank you thank you for uh, bearing with me today's class but yeah hari krishna thank you very much thank you for this excellent class mataji and thank you for being there for us all the time and thinking of us and not cancelling the class so we are really grateful um can i request arya govind prabhu is it possible for you to end this session hari krishna hari <clears throat> krishna mata ji thank you so much as uh, as you were telling we are uh, blessed to have your association and uh, especially for us today for nakuru it's been a in a great day and uh, we wanted to kick start uh, uh, some kind of serious uh, uh, in the sense center and then to start uh, preaching activity but all because of mansinga mata ji and then support of all the devotees in kenya were able to do this uh, yes i had i had uh, one uh, doubt mata ji when you are talking about uh, uh, pradani bhuta bhakti so pradani bhuta bhakti means uh, 
it's uh, it's not a pure form of bhakti. Uh, that's what you said, right? Mm. Correct. So bhakti is pradha. Mm. Okay, okay. But it's 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 mixed with dana and karma. That's what you Correct. said, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, it's mixed with jnana and karma, but bhakti is predominant. You do more bhakti than even karma or jnana. That is why it okay. is pradhani bhuta. Fine, fine. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, I would like to request all the devotees to chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra once in glorification of uh, Her Grace Radhika Kasturi Mataji. Hare all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Mataji, for your time. Hare Krishna.